Hi, today we'll be teaching about evolution. Before Darwin, there was no set in stone idea about how a species developed. Uh, first off, there was Aristotle and other early philosophers. Uh, along with Linnaeus, they believed that uh, species were created perfect and permanent. After that was Cuvier. He believed more in catastrophism, that a catastrophic uh, occurrence would happen just to wipe out uh, entire populations, which would cause a population change. After that was Hoot and Lyell. They believed basically the opposite of catastrophism. They believed that things happened over time, like catastrophes happened over time, caused the change over time in these species. After that was Lamarck. He believed that uh, animals would basically have some, they'd train themselves in having one physical attribute, like giraffes, they'd reach up and stretch the neck a little bit more, and then that would be passed on to their offspring. So Darwin's theory was basically that species do change over time, and they diverge from a common ancestor. And this, is, this change is facilitated through a process called natural selection. So natural selection is basically that organisms that are the best fit to survive in an environment will continue to live on and produce more offspring who will have their better adapted attributes to survive and continue to reproduce in that environment. Uh, an example is, you know, a certain bird could have a mutation to have a sharper, shorter beak to break through harder nuts. And this would create, give that bird greater ability to survive and get nourishment, which would thus pass on its genetics and thus create more birds and offspring just like it who would better survive in that environment. We have many evidence of evolution. One is fossil records. Um, we can go back in time, basically through the layers of the earth and see how older organisms have similar body types and body uh, structures as future organisms that came later after them. Um, we have things like embryology, where many embryos are very similar early in the early stages are very similar to each other. We have molecular record where most many many organisms have very similar DNA and such things. Okay, I'll be talking about main ideas four through six. So four is types of selection. So there are different types of natural selection. One of them would be directional. It's when it favors one extreme. And stabilizing, it favors the intermediate variations, and disruptive favors ex um, both ends of the extremes. And then um, sexual selection is basically, it favors organisms with traits that like increase its ability to attract mates or produce more offspring, like for example, uh, colorful feathers in birds. Outside of natural selection, there's also artificial selection. It's basically humans breeding plants and animals in order to produce desirable traits. Okay, number five, populations in Hardy Weinberg. Um, in this topic, it's important to keep in mind that evolution occurs in populations, not individual organisms. In a population, there are organisms with different forms of a gene. These are called alleles, and um, the variety of like these alleles come from random mutations. So the gene pool is the total sum of all alleles in the population. Hardy Weinberg is a theoretical equilibrium, so it's it considers a non-evolving population with constant allele frequencies and it serves as a null hypothesis model to see if any forces are acting on population. So the Hardy-Weinberg model assumes that there's a very large population size, um, which means there will be less effect from genetic drift, and then there's no gene flow, no mutation, no random, or no sexual selection, and then no natural selection. Okay. Um, topic six is speciation and mechanisms of evolution. So there are five factors that can help facilitate evolution. So one would be gene flow. It's basically migration in and out of the gene pool that changes allele frequencies. It can also introduce new, new alleles. And then number two would be genetic drift. There's, these are random changes in allele frequencies from generation to the next. And it affects smaller populations more because of higher variance. So three is the bottleneck effect. An environmental event results in the survival of only a few individuals, like a volcano eruption. These change the allele frequencies drastically, and they can reduce genetic variation. So the founder effect is the fourth item. It occurs when genetic drift changes allele frequencies in a small group of individuals that populate a new area. So it's uh, this is pretty similar to the reduction of a large population in the bottleneck effect. So the last one is non-random mating. This occurs when the probability that one individual mates with another certain individual is not the same for all members of the population. Um, so basically, like you don't have an equal chance of mating with everyone. Okay, a species is basically a group of individual organisms that live in the same place at the same time and they're able to interbreed with each other and produce viable offspring. Speciation would be the creation of a new species through evolution. So these generally recur through, uh, speciation occurs through reproductive isolation, which basically is just barriers that prevent two species from mating together.
So these barriers could be anything from geographic isolation. So like the two organisms live in like two separate lakes or um, they could also be behavioral. One is nocturnal, the other isn't. Or even just like genetic differences, like they're not able to produce a viable offspring together. Uh, for me, my barrier is usually my face or my social ineptitude. So the way that speciation often occurs is you have one big population and then a barrier is introduced or whatever and then suddenly you have two new groups and they since they're isolated from each other they don't interbreed they have different conditions that they adapt to new environments so they adapt separately and then they continue to evolve on their own as like two separate populations until eventually they're so different that they can't even interbreed with each other so this is uh, basically just divergent evolution